welcome to For The Drive and on today's episode of Friends of For The Drive I take a look at my first Italian sports car. So what we have here is a 2001 Alfa Romeo GTV Cup with a 3 litre V6 Busso engine producing 220 brake horsepower which will get you to 62 in about 6.5 seconds. Uh, this one has a trick exhaust which we will talk about in great length later I'm sure and it sounds incredible. So uh, I think we should uh, hop into the passenger seat and speak to the owner about this beautiful, beautiful car. So I am here, well I am now joining the owner Steve. Basically we met through the Hampshire Auto, uh, the Italian uh, car company that held in Autumn because you guys, you actually part organised it, did you not? Yeah, uh, myself, Paddy, Ross and James um, got together on a forum. Um, three of us had cups, one had a V6 Spider. Yeah. And we thought it would be a good idea if we got us Alpha boys together, us niche GTV owners. Um, so the very first meet, there were seven of us. Nice. Um, that, that's a bit different from the last week that I went to. <laughs> yeah, we're pushing 100 cars now. So we're really looking forward to April because we're going to try and get over 100. Yeah. So let's talk Let's talk about this because everyone knows that Alphas are a kind of a true petrol heads car. So what made you buy this? So like, what, I went through your head when I want to buy a car, it has to be an Alpha. Um, when I'd heard that story about you know, a true petrol head and I thought, well, I've got to address this. <laughs> so this is actually my second GTV. Um, I started off with a two litre Twin Spark. So I had it for a year without issue. Yeah. Everyone used to joke with me at work that I'd bought the only reliable Alpha on my own in the world. <laughs> um, and I, I do regret selling that. I was looking for a car probably two years ago um, something I could put in the garage and use at weekends. It was just a very much a late night eBay lucky find. Uh, I jumped on a train, went to Bristol, lovely chap I, I bought it from, but when I turned up I was a bit disheartened because as always in the pictures it looks better. Yes. And um, when I got there, all every panel was a different colour red. Oh no! Oh, um, the lacquer was flaking, the wheels were destroyed, windows didn't fit properly, there was wind noise on the way back. Aircon wasn't working, we didn't know why, hadn't investigated it, I thought okay, I just had faith in it. I thought I can make this look good, so um, we did the deal, I set to work and um, I've got it how I want it now. But it, it was, I mean a cup special anyway, but this one was doubly special because of the fact it was the official Alfa Romeo UK yes. press car, so you know, it had to be saved. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Interior wise it was all best spoke, so it came with an extra leather panel here. Yep. You got the half leather, which is quite unusual because almost all GTVs were full leather. What What would you say is the the pinnacle of why you love this car? It's the styling. You can you can park it up and walk around and just take in any angle, and it's so dramatic for what was essentially a low run production car, you know, road car. Uh, it's just a, a stunning, unique design and nothing else looks like it on the road. I'm also a bit of a sucker for limited edition cars. I've had a number of them in my time, but I like the fact that I'm driving something that you hardly ever see on the road. The plaque does a lot. I, I'm, I'm immediately going, I want, I want a car with a plaque. Yeah, oh. Alpha UK only imported 155 cups into the country. They were all red. That's not a lot, um, really. No. But the funny thing about the plaque is that um, they were a dealer fit. 
So you'll get some cups with the plaque off center. Oh, oh really? Oh, you get wasn't some of them in the center. It wasn't I'm done so in factory. Glad. No. And so the numbers aren't actually consecutive. Obviously, this, this being the press car would have been one of the very first cups yep. built, but it's number 42 out of 155. Whereas you think it would be in the low 10s or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you notice the hall marks on it? So is that sterling silver? It's solid silver, yeah. That's incredible as well. <laughs> question to ask an owner, what don't you like about this? I've addressed one of the biggest problems about this for me, because I'm six foot, um, it's a very shallow windscreen. It is, I mean I'm, You'll probably I'm, a, couple of short, I'm uh, a few inches shorter than you and I'm already, I can quite clearly It's uh, a bit of a letterbox, um, yeah. which when you've got a low sun is a real boon, but daily driving it does make you feel a little bit claustrophobic, right. and um, only recently I found out that these seats have got a 16mm spacer, which you can remove. Oh, okay. Um, which I've done on this side only, so that's okay. why you've got more of a more of that effect on your side. Okay. But what a difference 16mm makes, because um, it's not quite adjustable to seat. No. Um, but I feel so much better now in the car. Oh, okay. Um, otherwise, it's very comfortable. It's got the classic um, short legged Italian setup. So yes. what I did, I, I had to shove the seat right back. Yeah. Um, but what I did to counter that was put the steering wheel on, which has got a dish on it. So that brings the steering wheel oh, closer to me, right, okay, but yeah. enables me to have more legroom. Yeah. So it's, well, it's got, I was curious about whether that was actually it's not standard. what they came with. But I, was, I like it, but I was like, really, <laughs> that's what they gave you? I wish they did. It, the original steering wheel's really bulky. It's, it's triangular, lumpy. It's not very aesthetically pleasing at all. No. And um, I thought this is more like a motorsport car because Alpha built these special editions to commemorate the gentleman's racing uh, cup uh, that right. they had okay. um, where you had to pay an entry fee and they supplied the car and you did the racing. Um, so I, OMP, who made this steering wheel, actually supplied all the finishing kit for those cars. So you had like a um, metal pedal box, you had the steering wheel, OMP seats and roll cage and strut brace. Oh, okay. So I thought, well, if I'm gonna put a different steering wheel in, let's try and keep it on theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the purists probably don't like it. And um, I had to delete the airbag, but there you go. You've got so much to travel though. You're yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm not one of these old biddies who drives like this. <laughs> one of the last GTVs to be made uh, towards the end of the run, they moved production from Turin factory to Pininfarina up the road. Um, Which I just think is amazing. It's a nice touch, yeah, to think this was made in the same factory as some some greats. Yes. Um, but you can tell because you get the shield badge on top of the Pininfarina script. Yeah. That's how you know it was built in that factory. I mean, the whole idea of it being designed by Pininfarina is a badge of honour anyway. Literally yeah. a badge of honour, the fact that you got the script. And then on top to have it that so it was actually manufactured and put together in their own factory. The exhaust that I put on it, I mean, you have to release that V6 Bristow sound. It was way too quiet when I first bought it. And um, then you got the agonised decision, which exhaust do I go for? Like I went on YouTube yeah. and listened to a few guys who'd fitted different exhausts. And the Wizard was just by far and above the best. It, it had everything that I wanted. Every time you hear a rev, it does. It makes me giggle. And I was like, <laughs> not a lot of cars really actually just give you an involuntary response noise. You go, you might think, well, that sounds pretty good. But when you physically have to go, <laughs> yeah, then like that, you're under something. And yeah, I, I love and I like the way that the quads, the quad exhaust looks. I mean, that, actually, that it really was sets a sets off the back end for me actually. Yeah, it was a big decision. I mean, I'm a stickler for originality normally, and. Um, Alphas have always got sort of quirky exhaust sticking out of funny angles. They'd be slightly off centre or poking out a strange angle only on one side. And yeah. this only had it on the left hand side. And I feel with a, a V, you should have a quad or at least twin tailpipes um, to signify that and to release the sound a bit more. Yeah. Um, so then it's okay. I had to make a template from the cutout on the left hand side, mirror it, 
yeah. and then trim the right hand side. Um, but you, you did that yourself? Yeah, I, I cut that out myself. It was a bit um, nerve wracking. I was going to say, you only get one I... shot. Yeah, um, wow. But um, credit, well, credit's due to the wizard guys because when I fitted the exhaust, um, it was just perfect. Everything lined up perfectly. Oh, All the brackets, the hangers, um, the alignment, left to right. So, um, have you done anything else to the car, or have you got any other plans I in have. terms of modifying? Yeah. Um, so I put a pipe across air filter on it, a foam air filter, which doesn't affect the math. It was specially developed by Alpha Holics, uh, so I've got no running issues with that. That oh, was nice. to complement the exhaust system, really. Yeah. Um, the previous owner fitted Xenon headlights, which are a real bonus. Oh, nice. Um, I put the original Clarion head unit in okay. and uh, managed to find the six disc CD changer. Nice. I put it in the boot because that was an optional extra. Okay. Um, needed a new windscreen, so as part of the renovation, I had a genuine Alpha windscreen shipped over from Italy. Wow. It took three weeks to arrive because I wanted the little rounder on the window. Um, that that's that's very stickler for detail. Yeah. That, that's. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll be honest. I don't know if I would bother with that kind of effort, but I applaud you. But <laughs> I think I would just go just give me a dry screen. <laughs> well, it was being resprayed at the time anyway, so I wasn't missing it. Okay. Um, I had my time to kill. Um, modifications. Oh, I'll put a quick shifter on it, or a short shift, okay. because the throw was a bit longer. You'd actually your hand would actually hit the stereo when you went into third. Oh, in right. Oh, okay. So um, that that sped up the gear change a little. Um, I've actually got a one five six flywheel sitting in my loft, waiting for when the clutch eventually goes on this. And what you do is split the gearbox, you change the clutch, you put the new flywheel in, but also drop in a quaff limited slip differential yeah and then not only does it rev up even quicker but it really will put itself into the corners so yeah if you if you said right that's it the alpha's got to go for whatever reason what would you what would replace this basically would it be another alpha or would um, you just go no i've done my alpha thing do you know i think it would have to be because um I'll go as far as to say they're not just cars, they've got a real personality. And to try and replace it with something else, that would be the biggest thing you miss, right. is the personality. Um, there are quite a few alphas that I would, I would like to have. It'd be a very sad day and a very difficult day if I did ever have to sell this, because um, values are climbing at yeah. the moment. Um, I could get another cup but it would never be the press car. So. No, 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 this one is, as you say, extra special. It's, it's definitely one to hang on to. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, I, I like the, I really do like the GTA, um, the blue estate. Yeah. Uh, 156 GTA, is it? Yes, so I think so, yeah. They're yeah. really nice. But it'd be the same engine, essentially, as 3.2, yeah. but. What about the SZ? Oh, yeah, I'd have an SZ. <laughs> <laughs> I'd definitely have an SZ. Never, that, never having seen one before until that one arrived at the, uh, your last of me, I'm now like, fascinated by that one. It's probably yeah. the quirkiest alpha ever, and um, it got the nickname Il Bruto in Italy because they, they just said it's so ugly at the front end. Is, is, oh, it's they, madness. I, don't, I, I, I like it. I think it's, it's very much a concept car. Yeah. Like, and that was at least the bits and pieces that I found out about it after seeing one going home and going, what the hell is this? Um, I don't think anyone's ever called it beautiful. It's quite striking, isn't it? Yeah, it's, striking is a very good word, very apt. Um, and I, I said, concept car kind of alleviates a lot of its quirkiness. Yeah. Someone says, oh, it's a concept car, I forgive a lot more because it was, they were trying things out. Yeah. The front end, I quite like the, 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 the very angry looking body. It's like a predecessor to 159. It is, yeah, it's got the, the triple headlights. Triple headlights with a very kind of like overhanging bonnet yeah. lid, which actually looks very aggressive. It is I, aggressive. I, I like yeah. that look. But and then you get, to, and then all of a sudden the car just ends. Yeah, so that that steering wheel immediately feels quite. As you say, the it, it, uh, steering is heavy enough that you really feel what you're driving. Yeah. Hill start, oh god. Oh my god, yeah, wow. Sensitive, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Although I don't mind the noise. Yeah, I've done that a few times and people must think, what a dick. 
I'm not revving it off, it's just... <laughs> although actually, although the clutch is quite heavy, it's nice and smooth. I was kind of expecting it to be the, 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 the springs are quite heavy, so throwing yeah, it forward. Yeah, it's not in and right. out. Yeah, it's no. quite progressive. I, I must admit, immediately, uh, this thing looks really nice. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, and now you're moving, it doesn't feel heavy. No. It does feel direct. speedo almost hides how fast you're going because it, it's not although it's well it's you know designed to show you what you're doing I'm not saying that they design badly but it's not made it's not in your face it's not huge it's not central no and it's all it's kind of like oh you're just doing that time don't worry about it <laughs> I can go this fast I'm sure the Italian police would be on side with that <laughs> <Yeah>. sentiment <laughs> actually considering how low like low slung sports car it really is supposed to be like it's very much focused on being a sports kind of car it's not designed to be like soft and comfortable but it is no i don't think this ever would have been a replicable no um... but I, I, no no bump is making me go oh my back or... no i think the rear shocks would change just before i bought it okay but other than that i'm there's nothing in the history uh, straight over yeah so we could actually be sitting on very old tyre suspension here, I don't know. It, you know it's not dangerous, it doesn't feel no, no, no. wallowy or anything, but um, potentially it could be a lot stiffer. Yeah, yeah. And then it's done 168,000 miles now. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. You wouldn't think it, would you? No, Is I it? really wouldn't. That's 168. Yeah. You said earlier when you said, oh, high mileage, that's not good. And I, I almost went, oh, should I ask? I was like, oh, maybe I won't, maybe I won't. 168? Yeah. The condition and the, and the, the ride, I mean, there's no rattles in the interior. How did you, you are, you are one lucky man, how on earth have you got, <laughs> this doesn't feel like, like like it's gone nearly, well, over one Six and a half times around the earth. <laughs> oh my god, that's mad. No. shows on the six speed box and it's just right yeah for um i like the, th the short throw it's yeah it's nice isn't it right. for each speed zone 30 50 70 there's a perfect gear in this to just sit there and cruise oh yes <laughs> such an aggressive noise Thank you very much. This is. Uh, I just I would want a garage with about 50 cars. Because every single every time I drive one, I go, oh, that's actually. Now I see why this person owns it. Yeah. And now I want one. Oh, you're welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. That exhaust though. That is a big selling point. I think. <laughs> so that ends today's video, and what an hypnotic experience. The uh, the looks of this car and the the way it handles like that steering is so. It gives you such incredible feedback uh, and the engine really really wants you to just keep keep pushing and uh, to the point where you probably just lose your license but you'd be you'd have the biggest smile on your face when the police stopped you um, it definitely would uh, someone said to me you want to own an alpha definitely the answer would be yes so a huge thank you to steve for letting me uh, sit in the seat and uh, take it for a little run just to see what it's like and coming out and explaining why he loves this car so much and i can see why uh, but that is it, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.